What's up, everybody? My name is Derek Knight. For those of you who don't know me, uh, personal trainer, nutrition weight loss specialist. Uh, worked for a very long time as a support worker. Still work as a support worker privately. Uh, I volunteer myself as a football coach, uh, high school and as well as summer football. Uh, I also have a degree in psychology, so I've read stacks of books on how and why people think and theories behind them. And uh, at this point in time in my life, I'm left with a few questions. I'm left with a few things that I don't know. And I've, I know I've attained a lot of knowledge in my life. I am not cellular biology knowledge, how things are made, what protein, what protein really is, and what it does for your body, like how all things are made of proteins and amino acids. It gets, it's amazing the way that, that their body works. Uh, the muscles, where your muscles work, they interact with bones, how they attach to bones. What your body requires, the type of food your body requires, uh, and what exactly your body requires, uh, food and water and oxygen and how it works with your body. Um, and as a support worker, the things I've seen with special needs individuals from anything from autism to, to the fetal alcohol syndrome, cerebral palsy, pica, prater willy, like I've seen these special needs uh, individuals and things that they go through and I've seen similarities and you try not to categorize things as people but that's how we understand things as people is we categorize uh, we qualify things put them in a category categories and we quantify it so we take every person and everything that we see in people and we put it into a category and then we put them into subcategories in our brain much like a computer with files right if you took all your word documents put them in a word file then took all your word documents put them into different files like work and fitness uh, uh, play times, poetry, sonnets, limericks, etc. Or you, put, you go to poetry and you go to different subjects of poetry, you go to limericks, sonnets, uh, etc. I don't know, whatever else there is out there, hip hop rhymes, whatever, right? So we as people, we categorize things and, and, and compartmentalize things, try to understand them. But people are still all unique and individual. That's the unique thing about psychology is that we learn, you learn so many different theorists like Vygotsky and Maslow and Freud and how many other billions can I think of Ch Chomsky and oh and there's tons there, there's there's a lot and I don't want to get into all of them right now if I have to pull up my textbooks you guys want to question me on these theorists and, and some of the ideas I guess I can pull up the text for you but uh, don't don't make me please but that the stacks of textbooks like this on on theorists and theories um, and what I've realized in my experience is that every person that I've met. Is, is a different person and if, through working with special needs every person has a special need uh, a special type of one in their life a special type of thing they need help with there are, there's nobody who's entirely independent no person is entirely independent like you grew up with the love of your mom or an adopted mom or some type pardon me some type of caring uh, and this is this is true fact with humans is that you need that love and affection in your life from childhood um, at a very early age, so you get that, you know, the nutrients, the idea of how to treat others. So all people, if from my experience, have, have a special need. Um, and as a personal trainer, you see that frequently. People who want to be fit and healthy, who want to work out, want to get strong, but they don't know what to do. And when they learn, they have questions, then they have doubts, then they have fears. And our fears of, of going to a gym, and every time, every time I worked at a gym, I worked at a major corporate, a corporate gym, and the clients I always came in and I had interviews with would always say, well, I feel like everyone's watching me at the gym. I feel like I'm being watched. And the reality is you are being watched at the gym. They are watching you work out. Someone does see you when you come in. And I see, I see some of you ladies who come in with your makeup on, your hair done, trying to look for something. And the way we define the gym is as a meat market. It's a way that you can pick up easily. You can meet someone new in your life. And that's why you go to the gym. That's why you go to the gym. And if you want to go to the gym to meet somebody, that's, that's your thing. That's a, it's a social place. Go ahead. Um, but for a lot of people who, who really need, who really need health and really need fitness, the gym is a, the, a major corporate gym or some small gyms are not the place to do such a thing. So I for myself, I go, I go home to home and work with families together or couples together or, or person with special needs, work with him and their staff together so they get some type of uh, reciprocal work. You know, it's almost competitive, but not really. Um, and I work with a lot of athletes too, and, and the things that I've seen from these people, uh, from all people, the way they train, uh, there's likes and dislikes for each person that's individual. Uh, for me, I, I love I love medicine ball work. Almost any type of medicine ball work, that's what something that I specialize in is medicine ball work. Uh, I used to love the bench press and dumbbell press. I love the yoga ball. 
I love using the yoga ball for my dumbbell press and, and uh, a few other ab workouts. These are things that I like. I also like body weight work. I do a lot of body weight work and that's, that's just my thing. I like to master my body before I master weights. I'm not looking to get big and bulky. I don't need to be that. As an athlete, I have to be, I have to be fast and agile. And I'm only 5'9", five, five around 140. I'm going to give you my exact weight, but around 140, I go up and down, depending on my water intake. But uh, every person is different. You train for your purpose. And as, as an athlete, I still play football. I still train. I have to have high endurance as well as, uh, as exceptional speed and exceptional agility. So I train for that. If you're training as a beginner, you're going to learn as a beginner. If you're training as a bodybuilder, you're going to have to eat and train like a bodybuilder. If, if you're training like... You want to play only football, only one specific, specific position in football, train for that. I, could, I always use the, the, the classic phrase, practice the way you play. And that's for every person and what they want to do with their life. If you work in an office, maybe perhaps the one thing you want to do, in an, if, you work in a, if you're sitting all day, if you're in a car or you're in a, you're an office chair, uh, and you do a lot of sitting, something you really gotta, can master is sitting and standing without any hands, any hands help. If you work on squatting, just simple, good form, good squat form, because we sit and stand all day, whether or not we're taking a shit, whether or not we're sitting in a chair, sitting in a car, watching TV, doesn't matter. We sit and stand all day long. If you learn to sit and stand properly, that's going to singly enhance your life tenfold. Just learning how to sit and stand properly. Sometimes you can have resistance, and then you learn how to sit and stand properly. And one way you do that is putting your heels into the ground. Of course, the phone will ring. So what I've noticed uh, for a few of the people that have asked me questions, they've asked me, um, you know, what's healthy food? And I tell them, like, eating fruits and vegetables. If it comes from the earth, it's probably healthy. But then they bring up the pesticide thing. And uh, talking about pesticides and, and other things we do to our food, um, or mass corporations do your food, like DuPont, Monsanto's are two, two obvious examples. Uh, eating those foods... Are no longer it's no longer perceived as healthy by the general population as uh, they've been so chemically altered that we our bodies aren't ingesting the nutrients appropriately, uh, and we're taking all these chemicals, and the chemicals are stuck in your body, and your body has to deal with these chemicals. Even our water, um, you know, our water that used to be used to be clean. Look at our lakes. I live in Canada. I'm a Canadian. I look at my lakes that used to be clean. There's some clean water. It used to be fresh water. And then we polluted them. We, we filled them full of nonsense. And, and it may not be a big deal now. But what are you going to do in 10, 20 years? You know, we can't just brush things off, procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate. It's not going to do anything. Any, any health professional will tell you procrastinating is a terrible disease. It's, it's almost as bad as property. It's not a disease. I guess it's not a disease if you want to call it a terrible habit. It's procrastinating. Especially when it comes to global health. You know, the, the two of the five things people require are clean water and, and healthy, nutritious food. Clean water and healthy, nutritious food. The other three things, the other three things, a person needs oxygen, shelter, and love and affection. I already mentioned, like effective shelter, love and affection. Without good clean water and without healthy, I don't, I don't call it organic, just healthy, healthy fruits and vegetables that haven't been contaminated with chemicals. These are these are ways we maintain health as humans. And it shouldn't just be for us in North America. It should be for everyone in the world. And there is a way to do this. It requires global reform of our social our social standards. Global, not just in Canada. Maybe we can start here in Canada. Maybe that's the best thing to do. Is start here in Canada. We have the land mass. We have the minerals. We have the oil. We have wood. But we have to find a way to mass produce healthy food. And, mat and clean up our water. Maybe not mass produce it, but clean it. At the very least, we all have the opportunity of clean water. Every person, every person deserves these rights. However, if the power is going to remain in the hands of the few, then how do we expect to make a difference as people, as a global population? The only way we can do it is if we work together. If we work together, we can produce clean food. We can produce clean water. We can have love for each other and affection, love for what we do and how we live. We can produce effective shelter. And we can have clean air. And I'm going to ask Max, I know all about dirty air. Anyways, I wish you all the best of luck. 
best wishes, happy trading, good health.